Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everyone, I am Emlata Kanniyapen doing my research under the guidance of Dr. Vignesh Muthuvijayan. Today I will be giving a lecture on immunology. The main lecture is based on immune responses to foreign materials or biomaterial or any implant. So before we uh, understand or uh, go deep into the understanding of immune responses uh, in the presence of biomaterial, we should know few basics of immunological uh, uh, responses or immunological terms and or what is immunology or what are the cells involved in immune responses and all. So uh, in this lecture I will be uh, giving a brief introduction about what is immunology or uh, what are the uh, immune, immune responses or what are the types of immune responses or what are the cells or organs involved in immune system and uh, the major uh, cells which are responsible for uh, immune responses. So uh, we should know what is immunology. So what is immunology? It is just the study of uh, biology which uh, studies the immune systems of all organisms or uh, what do you mean by immunity? We say right you have a very good immune uh, immune response uh, for this kind of infection or uh, so what do you mean by that? So what is immunity? Uh, immunity is nothing but the protection of body against pathogens or infectious uh, infections caused by pathogens. When I say pathogens, pathogens are like viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites or some protein. So this is about immunity and what is pathogen and there are two types of immunity, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. When I say it is innate immunity, it is the primary form of defense mechanism in our body. So our body, it itself has a different mechanism like it is a very good, uh, it has a very good defense force to act against the pathogens which enters the body. So it is divided into innate and adaptive immunity. So innate immunity where innate immunity is like it is always on okay uh, it is uh, it is present from the birth uh, this is the prime primary form of defense mechanism so always on which means it has barriers when i say barriers it means what? What are the barriers that protect our body from the pathogens? The first and foremost is skin. Skin is the largest organ of the body. It protects our entire body from various pathogens entering into our body. The next one is mucous membrane. Mucus. There are several places in our several parts of body are covered by muc uh, mucus which protects the those uh, parts uh, from the pathogens. Mucus are nothing but the two or more layers of epithelial cells and then pH. The acidic pH of our stomach which is like around 2 to 3 uh, uh, very acidic with, uh, which kills the bacteria effectively. Skin, mucous membrane, pH then microbial flora which is ple, uh, present in our body. There are some good bacteria in our gut which protects our body from the uh, uh, pathogens. So these are the main barriers present from our birth for uh, to fight against the pathogens. Then again in immu innate immunity this part of the uh, cells are always present. Okay, always on, no matter what the pathogen enters, it will go and uh, kill that, uh, it will go and act against that pathogen. The next is immediate, immediate response, where the cells present in this, uh, like 
they are not activated all the time but once when the pathogen enters it immediately act active gets activated and start acting or fight against the entering pathogen for example blood cells so these blood cells it will be there in the it will go it will be there in the blood stream what once when the pathogen enters it will go get activated and fight against those pathogens and one more thing in always on kind of uh, immunity there is one complement factors complement factors are not the cells they are kind of protein uh, proteins which acts against the pathogen not cells okay which acts against the pathogen so this about the innate immunity and the next one is acquired immunity or adaptive immunity it is more specific and specialized kind of uh, response which becomes part of our immune system at a later stage uh, which means it is not an immediate response it is a kind of delayed response okay so adaptive immunity is delayed response so the major cells present uh, uh, responsible for this type of uh, immunity is lymphocytes lymphocytes again divided into t cells and b cells and natural killer cells t cells b cells and natural killer cells okay and this b cells produces antibodies these b cells produces antibodies which fight against the pathogen and t cells again t helper cells and t cytotoxic cells are there okay natural killer cell different uh, differ uh, distinguish uh, from t cells and uh, b cells with the presence of uh, uh, where b cells and t cells are the specialized receptors on the surface natural killer cells will not have that that is the major difference between these uh, uh, cells okay so when i say the immunity is based on the cells uh, because of the cells where in innate immunity uh, or uh, as well as in the um, adaptive immunity when i say the immune response is because of the cell it is called cell mediated immune response cell mediated immune response the other immune response is mainly based on uh, proteins or these antibodies they are not cells which are termed as humoral mediated immune response okay these are the two major immune responses which acts in our body so in this slide where uh, uh, innate immunity is non specific resistant which means no matter what the pathogen is once it enters the blood stream it will go on engulf and it will kill the pathogen that is non specific uh, immunity whereas the adaptive it is more specific it will go and kill the most specific antigen or a specific it will produce a specific antigen to kill that the specific uh, pathogen okay specific resistant responses to the immune system so the first line of defense we all know that the barriers so the barriers are nothing but skin mucous membrane where are uh, for example for mucous membrane is like uh, nose uh, eyes um, uh, lips and all where eyes is covered by mucous membrane it is not covered by skin uh, which protects our eyes from the external pathogens and normal bi microbiota present in our gut our gut will produce a good bacteria to engulf the bad bacteria also the ph and the second line of uh, defense are the phagocytes phagocytes which engulf the micro uh, microorganisms mainly of wbc cells and the third line of defense which are the adaptive immunity specialized lymphocytes the lymphocytes are the major cells responsible for this central cells for the adaptive immunity which are again divided into b cells and t cells and the b cells produces antibodies antibodies which uh, fight against the pathogen so uh, these are the uh, specific non specific uh, os defenses summary of non specific innate immunity anatomic barriers which are skin mucous membrane the skin is the 
largest organ of the body and it plays a very important role in our defense mechanism and mechanical barrier which stops the entry of microbes on the first step itself. And the acidic environment uh, stomach acidic uh, which uh, digests the bacteria and mucous membrane, mucous membrane uh, again helps the entry uh, helps to protect the entry of uh, microbes into the internal organs and the physiological barriers like temperature, low pH that which I said already acidity of stomach and chemical mediators are the factors complement factors and phagocytic or endocytic barriers where are the various uh, type of cell which will endocytose, endocytose is nothing but the engulfing the uh, cells and breaking down into foreign macromolecules and the cells responsible for those are uh, macrophages, neutrophils, monocytes, neutrophils and tissue macrophages and inflammatory barrier where the tissue damage and infection induce uh, leakage of vascular fluid, this contains the serum proteins which has the antibacterial activity and in, into the affected area. So, uh, this is the principal mechanism of innate and adaptive immunity. In terms of adaptive immunity, the adaptive immune uh, system has four uh, important uh, characteristic attributes. The first one is antigen specificity. These are the characteristics of adaptive immunity. The second one is diversity, diversity. Third one is immunologic memory. And the last one is self, non-self recognition. non-self recognition. First attribute characteristic attribute is antigen specificity. So, it permits the uh, uh, immune system to distinguish even a small difference among the antigens. So, it will be more specific uh, in, uh, in recognizing the antigen and uh, diversity it allows the immune um, Mm, adaptive immune system for generating tremendous in di uh, diversity of uh, recognition molecules, recognition molecules in allowing that to uh, recognize billions of unique structures present in the foreign antigens that is diversity. And immunologic, uh, immunologic memory once the immune system recognize the uh, antigen and responded to the antigen. When the same antigen it encounters the second time, for the second time it will develop the high level of immune uh, uh, response, immune uh, to that specific pathogen. It, it keeps that in its memory that we have encountered this already and we became immune to that. So, uh, this is the, uh, this attribute is a very important attribute uh, in um, adaptive immunity and the finally once it is responded and the immune system uh, should be able to differentiate from the self and the non-self uh, uh, components in order to act on the non-self components. If the, so what will happen uh, when the immune system fails to recognize between or differentiate between the self and non-self uh, um, components? Yes, obviously it will lead to some other responses and it, it could be fatal. So, these are the major uh, four important uh, uh, characteristics of uh, adaptive immunity. So, th the principal uh, mechanisms of adaptive immunity, so main is uh, microbes, epithelial barriers, phagocytes and complements. And in, where in case of adaptive immunity, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes produces antibodies, antibodies and T lymphocytes are the effect of T cells, TH cells and TC cells. So, uh, this is all about the types of immunity. Like uh, to summarize that innate immunity and adaptive immunity, innate immunity is non-specific uh, resistance like whatever the pathogen it enters, enters the body, it will go and uh, uh, act on the fight against that pathogen. Whereas, the adaptive immunity it is not an uh, specific, uh, it is it's like completely specific to the uh, pathogen and fight against that pathogen and it is also termed as delayed response. Adaptive immunity is also a delayed response, termed as delayed 
response immune cyst immunity. Whereas, uh, innate immunity it acts as immediately there is immediate response as well as always on response. There will be some barriers which are always on in the innate immunity and major uh, cells present in innate immunity is like uh, skin or the epithelial cells and microbes and there are uh, um, and few uh, chemical factors or physical factors are also involved like uh, temperature or pH and chemical cytokines and uh, uh, they are they those are involved in innate immunity. Adaptive immunity major cells in adaptive immunity are lymphocytes. Okay. So, this is all this all about uh, immunity. Now, we will go to the cells present in the immune system, cells of the immune system. So, and this picture is the uh, process of hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis is nothing but the formation of blood cells. So, any blood cell will originate from the hematopoietic stem cell. Blood stem cell is nothing but hematopoietic stem cell which is self renewing cells okay. and this self renewing cells will give rise to either of myeloid progenitor cells or lymphoid progenitor cells. These are progenitor cells. When I say they are progenitor cells it will uh, which means it loses the self renewing capacity and it will be specific to a particular cell lineage. Okay, uh, and myeloid cell, cell progenitors, uh, progenitor cells, lymphoid uh, progenitor cells, and this hematopoietic uh, blood cell originated from bone marrow. So that is the place where this hematopoiesis takes place. Two major cell lineages is lymphoid uh, cell lineage and the myeloid stem lineage. So myeloid stem cell uh, uh, progenitor cell will give rise to granulocytes, uh, progenitor cells. Basophil progenitor cells, eosinophil uh, progenitor cells from the granulocyte it will give rise to neutrophils, monocytes and this monocytes give rise to macrophages okay, which are very important cells responsible for uh, immune system, immunity and uh, neutrophils monocytes macrophages and neutrophil progenitor cells give rise to uh, neutrophils and basophil progenitor cell give rise to basophils, eosinophil progenitor cells give rise to eosinophils. Okay. Also erythrocyte progenitor cells which give rise to red blood cells and megakaryocytes which gives rise to platelets. Okay. So, this is a, this all about the myeloid lineage, it also give rise to dendritic cells. Okay, dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells, they are APCs, antigen presenting cells. Okay. And uh, this is all about myeloid stem cell uh, lineage which is uh, nothing but which gives rise to uh, granulocyte uh, progenitor cells, basophil, eosinophil and granulocytes again give rise to neutrophils as well as monocytes. From monocyte macrophages are originated and uh, it also give rise to megakaryocytes which from which platelets or uh, platelets originates and then uh, erythrocyte from which RBCs. Uh, this is all about myeloid lineage. Whereas, in lymphoid uh, stem cell lineage where it gives rise to lymphocyte, lymphocyte which are again divided into B lymphocytes, T lymphocyte and natural killer cells. Okay. Also it gives rise to dendritic cells. So, these are the uh, again these are we all know these are the WBC cells, white blood cells. So, in this natural killer cells mainly differ from B lymphocytes on the T lymphocytes with the presence of surface uh, the presence or absence of surface receptors where in B cells and T cells have the presence have the surface receptors whereas in natural killer cells it do not have and it is uh, called as the large cell it is a large uh, cell and whereas B and T are uh, small naive cells okay these are about the cells of the immune system and we should we should know about the uh, before uh, going in depth with the cells, uh, I will tell about the organs of the immune system. Uh, 
okay. There are uh, it is divided into primary organ, primary and secondary. Okay, in primary bone marrow and thymus. These are the organs responsible for the production of these cells and secondary lymph node and spleen. Okay. So, this primary organs where it, uh, it, it is the site for the maturation of the cells B cells or uh, the T cells. Okay. This is the maturation site. Once it got matured, it acts against the pathogen, right? It will go and fight against the pathogen that will act in the secondary organs, which are action site. This is a uh, basic uh, few uh, few points you should uh, know when you know when you study about immune system. The organs of the immune system, which are the primary lymphoid organs or the secondary organs in primary, uh, which is the place for the maturation of the cells, bone marrow and uh, thymus for B cells and T cells. And the uh, secondary uh, organs are lymph node and uh, spleen, where it it will be an action site for the matured cells to act against the pathogen. So, this all about the organs and the cells of the immune system and the morphology and staining characteristics of the various type of blood cells. So, from this the large lymphocyte uh, as I said uh, as I said in the previous slide the large lymphocytes are nothing but natural killer cells okay. and the small lymphocytes are nothing but B cell and T cell. Okay. And these are the small cells or the red cells or the red blood cells and um, monocyte, uh, monocytes are also present and uh, basophils or uh, eosinophils are also present. So, uh, both uh, red blood cells and platelet they lack nucleus and they are the most numerous cells present. Okay. Most numerous uh, of the leukocyte populations are neutrophils. The, in the next slide you will be seeing the percentage of uh, different cell types in present in the WBC and lymphocytes are the predominant cell type for responsible for the immune response. Okay, they are the central cells for the responsible for the immune response. So, this slide uh, will tell you about the percentage of uh, cells present in the W, uh, white blood cells. So, neutrophils, uh, neutrophils it is like uh, it occupies like 60 to 70 percent okay. and uh, basophils and eosinophils, uh, basophils 0 0.5 to 1 percent, eosinophils 2 to 4 percent, monocytes 3 to 8 percent and lymphocytes 20 to 25 percent. And in this neutrophils and eosinophils are again phagocytic cells, neutrophils and Eosinophils, Bago, uh, basophils are non phagocytic. Okay. Monocytes give rise to macrophages. B cells, T cells. Okay. So, in this, uh, this uh, classification is mainly based on the uh, granulation and the uh, staining characteristic of cells. So, A granular and granular it is based on the presence of granules in the cytoplasm, whereas uh, um, uh, also uh, based on the classification of the nuclei, okay. uh, based on the classification of morphology, based on the difference in morphology and staining characteristic. or uh, granulation or granulation. So, lymphocytes and monocytes are a granular it does not have uh, granules in the cytoplasm whereas, basophil, neutrophil and eosinophil as granules in the cytoplasm and uh, neutrophils are uh, as a multi lobed nuclei, multi lobed nuclei okay, and it will stain with both acidic and basic dyes, stains both acidic and basic dyes. Okay. And eosinophils, eosinophils is a bi, it has a bilobed nucleus, bilobed nucleus where it stains only with the acidic dye eosin red that is why it is name as eosinophils, only acidic dye it stains with 
only acidic dye eosin red. And whereas basophils stains only were basic dye methylene blue. Okay. So, this all about the classification based on the morphology and staining characteristics or granulation present in the cells. And this, this picture summarizes the all the cells present in the immune system which are responsible for the immune responses. So, cells of the immune system um, in for innate immune system for adaptive immune system for certain cells which are produced in both in res, uh, in both uh, innate and immune uh, adaptive immune system whereas neutrophils uh, monocyte eosinophil basophils uh, are present in innate immune system whereas t cell b cell so when i say it is an innate immune system it these cells will be there always always on and when uh, pathogen comes it will go and act against the pathogen no matter what the pathogen is or the, what the antigen is. But whereas when I say the cells of uh, adaptive immune system they are the delayed response they act against the specific antigen which are T cell, B cell and T helper cell and T cytotoxic cells and both immune system has um, macrophages and dendritic cells macrophages for the phagocytic activity. So, uh, so uh, with this uh, slide we know about uh, what are the immunity and what are the immune responses and what are the cells present in the immune system and what are the organs of the immune system. So, next I will uh, talk about macrophages. So, macrophages are nothing but uh, the uh, we can say the enlarged monocytes ok. Monocyte circulate in a blood stream for a period of 8 hours during which they become enlarged and go to a specific tissue where, where they become they were fused together and enlarge and become an macrophage ok. Macrophage. So, the main difference between monocyte and macrophage is in the structure ok. The structure of macrophage is 5 to 10 fold larger than the monocytes larger than the monocytes also the number of organelles and its complexity is increased than the monocyte especially lysosomes it the number is increased a lot as well as its complexity also it produces hydrolytic enzymes. So, this is the major difference between macrophage and the neutrophils. Neutrophils will not produce the uh, hydrolytic enzyme uh, other than that it will go and phagocytize uh, in the similar way how the macrophage do. But the macrophage secretes hydrolytic uh, 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 enzymes and some soluble factors as well as. So, macrophage is the fused enlarged form of monocyte. Okay. Uh, when it go migrates and go deposited to a specific tissue it becomes a tissue specific macrophage and these are the same images of the macrophage. The first is the macrophage same image where it has a uh, uh, like very long uh, pseudopodia and it act, acts against the bacteria right and this is the macrophage pseudopodia bacteria. The same is here, uh, but uh, uh, this one is our erythrocyte. So, how beautiful it is the macrophages are, right? The macrophages are very beautiful, no? Because they are very important to our immune system to fight against the pathogen. We should praise them, of course. <laughs> and uh, specialized uh, macrophages, specialized macrophages which go and deposited in the tissue and it becomes the tissue specific macrophages and here we have given the few examples of tissue specific macrophages. So, the macrophage in the lung or alveolar, uh, alveolar macrophages and Kupfer cells in the liver, osteoblasts in the bone, 
microglia in the central nervous system which is in the brain, histiocytes in connective tissue, mesenglial cells in the kidney. These are the tissue specific macrophages and this is this uh, diagram uh, shows the maturation of macrophage first the stem cell and the monoblast uh, uh, to that it uh, forms an monocyte, monocyte mon originate from this uh, monoblast and that monocyte uh, uh, fused and forms an enlarged one macrophage once it activates it is an activated there are two types like resting macrophages and activated macrophages one resting macrophages it will go and sit in one place it will take rest once the once someone calls it like when it gets some signal or uh, then it will act against the pathogen but certain in the macrophages are active throughout activated macrophages are more effective than the uh, resting macrophages that obviously right when it, like a person who is very active is more effective than a person who sits in the uh, same place for all the time and these are the tissue specific macrophages and the lower uh, picture uh, uh, lower panel shows the activated macrophages you can see how large it is the activated macrophage in terms of morphology has also the presence of uh, organelles uh, in number as well as its complexity the, the complex structure so activated macrophages are very uh, um, effective than the uh, resting macrophages so activated macrophages activated macrophages are more effective than the resting macrophages in uh, in killing uh, pathogens for several reasons they are like it has increased phagocytic activity and it produces increased production of inflammatory mediators Also, it produces uh, special cytotoxic proteins. These proteins can act uh, uh, against several uh, pathogens, like specific pathogens, like uh, cytotoxic proteins. It acts against inter, uh, certain uh, uh, broad range of uh, bacteria. It acts this cytotoxic protein. like acts against the infected uh, this cytotoxic protein acts against the broad range of targets including intracellular bacteria broad range of targets including intracellular bacteria virus infected cells including intracellular or cancer infected cells intracellular bacteria virus infected cells or cancer cells so, this is all about the activated uh, macrophages. So, yeah, so normally in resting state, uh, normally in a resting state, macrophages are activated by a variety of stimuli in course of uh, immune response. So, uh, there are certain uh, macrophages which will be in a resting state which starts to activate once to get the signal from the other cells. And phagocytosis, it is an important uh, uh, activating stimulus. Okay, phagocytosis is an important activity. Phagocytosis is nothing but the engulfing of the pathogen. So, again, the macrophages are further activated by cytokines secreted by T helper cells. So, in this way, in the in the entire immune responses or immune system, this macrophages and facilitate uh, and uh, T helper cells facilitate with each other. Macrophages and TH cells, and uh, they are the mediators by the also it activates uh, stimuli mediators by the response uh, inflammatory response these are the certain stimulus for the uh, resting macrophages to get activated next is the phagocytosis phagocytosis are nothing but the engulfing of the foreign material okay there are three steps first it has to go and recognize what is the uh, pathogen and then the neutrophil gets attached and uh, engulf thereby uh, once it engulf the lysozyme and everything all the enzyme acts, acts on it kill it and degrade it so engulf and and yeah, engulfment and degradation may not happen with the biomaterials. Yes, right. The biomaterials will be large enough for that the phagocytes go and engulf it. So, it cannot do that for the biomaterials. It, it is a different uh, type of uh, phagocytic, uh, ph we cannot say a phagocytic, it is in a foreign body reaction will happen when the in the presence of biomaterials. Phagocytosis 
Fordian body reaction will happen in the presence of implants or a biomaterials. So, these are the steps of phagocytosis for the engulfing and pathogen. The first bacterium becomes attached to a membrane called pseudopodia. Then once it is uh, attached, it is ingested from a phagosome and then phagosome fuses with lysosome and this lysosomal enzyme digests the captured material. Finally, the digestive products released from the cells. But if this target, if a phagocytosis uh, fails to engulf the target, it will become more frustration. See, if I have given a some, if I have given some work to do, if I did not do that, obviously my senior, uh, my senior or the guide who gave me this work will become frustrated or even me, even me as well I will become frustrated, right. So, the same thing will happen to phagocytosis because it cannot do the work what it is given to us, uh, given to him. So, that is why uh, it is termed as frustrated phagocytosis, okay. So, now I will be showing a small video about the process called phagocytosis. Uh, phagos uh, what are phagocytosis? The engulfing of the uh, bacteria by the immune cells. So, what are the immune cells which play a very important role in phagocytosis? Macrophages. So, uh, now look into the video, you will understand even more better. So, those are the cells or macrophages which engulfing the bacteria, they eat and destroy the bacteria, they are the white blood cells which are called as macrophages. See how they are invading, it is very beautiful right. So, the main job is to eliminate foreign entities that invade your body which is through the process called phagocytosis. See this bacteria you know as soon as it enters it releases some proteins which go and alert the macrophages to start its function. These macrophages attaches to that bacterium with the help of special proteins that are present on the cell surface. Then the bacterium is engulfed and locked inside a structure called phagosome. Then it is cleaved and destroyed by the digestive enzymes into pieces. And these resulting particles can be either used by the cell or get out of the cell, released out of the cell. And there it leads to the foreign body giant cells. The foreign body giant cells are the large cells which are uh, uh, which are formed as a result of fusion of macrophages. Okay, that happens in the presence of biomaterials. As I explained uh, before, so biomaterial cannot be engulfed by the phagocytosis. So if any implant or any biomaterial are placed inside, there are series of reactions will happen. Okay, in that reaction foreign uh, body giant cell play, uh, uh, takes uh, plays a very important role in that. So, uh, foreign body reaction if I say foreign body reaction it is mainly due to the presence of macrophages and the foreign body giant cells. Okay. So, uh, again the blood tissue and tissue biomaterial interaction and the biomaterial. So, see monocyte tissue is there blood and tissues and when I place a biomaterial there will be some interaction between tissue and biomaterial right. So, their macrophages will there and in the biomaterial foreign body giant cells will form. So, the a huge mass surrounding the biomaterial with the presence of macrophages and foreign body giant cells. So, foreign body giant cell is the collection of fused macrophages in the presence of because of the presence of foreign body. Okay, large foreign body. So, the adhesion of macrophages and foreign body giant cells at the surfaces of biomaterial exists between uh, produces an environment that exists between the cell membrane and surface of the biomaterial. So, I will ask you one question. So, if I want to place a biomaterial, what are the factors you need to consider for an uh, immune response? For an uh, what to say for an advantageous immune response there are see if we cannot uh, directly place a biomaterial inside our uh, body without a proper uh, understanding of the immune responses or the proper uh, understanding of the properties of the biomaterial right. So, what are the properties you need to think a lot uh, for an in vivo application or as a implant. Main thing is size and surface chemistry. Surface chemistry of a biomaterial, any material, biomaterial if uh, placing uh, inside our body or placing in vivo is very important, okay. Surface chemistry, uh, 
so there should be some compatibility right compatibility between tissue and the biomaterial see there are two uh, interaction majorly takes place cell cell interaction cell tissue interaction uh, sorry cell cell interaction and the uh, tissue biomaterial interaction tissue biomaterial interaction should be proper that then only it become non toxic otherwise compatibility will be of question mark compatibility means the safety okay so you need to consider the surface chemistry uh, degradation of uh, degraded uh, products like whether it the degrading products or the leachate from the biomaterial should not should be non toxic uh, and the size, size uh, surface chemistry geometry everything you need to be considered for the uh, for degrading the uh, Immune, uh, immune response. So, inflammatory response. So, inflammatory response it is the localized non specific response to an infection or wound. It is just the physiological response as a result of physiological response as a result of uh, infection or injury that is the inflammatory response the immediate response in our body. Tissue damage which are uh, due to the pathogen invading uh, uh, invading pathogen or a wound which induces the complex sequence of e e uh, events that stimulate the immune response right that is collectively termed as inflammatory response. If my tissue is getting damaged there will be a sequence of e uh, events takes place in order to repair this tissue. So, because our immune system is more effective by its own right to repair the tissue. So, that uh, collective uh, collectively known as inflammatory response. The inflammatory response is this complex sequence of events that happens when the tissue is injured or damaged ok. And this provides early stage of protection, early, st early stage of protection by restricting the damage uh, to the site of infection or tissue engineering. So, tissue damage and infection due induces the leakage of vascular fluid, leakage of vascular fluid that containing serum proteins with antibacterial activity and inflex the phagocytic cells into the affected area. So, uh, when there is any injury or uh, any um, infection, so the first and foremost uh, response the uh, inflammatory response will be the swellness right the redness or the swelling or heat or pain we would have felt it at many times by this time you guys would have felt it in many stages or at many events about the see if even for a small example when a mosquito bites you it immediately it becomes uh, swell right it swells immediately and uh, you will get kind of pain again it is an uh, inflammatory response okay and these are the uh, redness, swelling, heat and pain are the cardinal signs of the inflammation uh, due to the three major events. These are the uh, signs of the inflammation of the um, inflammatory response ok. So, when I say uh, the events like uh, injured cell which release chemical once the cells got injured immediately it starts secreting some cells ok signals it is the kind of signal for the others to get activated. So, that say think that yeah it is got damaged we have our uh, duty to go and repair that. So, it uh, releases the chemical alarm signals like inf they, they are called as inflammatory mediators ok histamines, prostaglandins and kinins inflammatory mediators. So, these are the in uh, what to say medical indication indication to say that uh, there is some injury or infection ok histamine prostaglandins or kinanins that cause the blood vessels to dilate which is the vasodilation as a result there is an increased blood flow to the site of injury. So, once the uh, site got injured there will be increased uh, blood flow that is vasodilation again redness and swelling of the affected area due to increased blood flow also there is an increase in tissue temperature. We would have felt no there will be some uh, uh, heat generating uh, if there is some uh, injury right that is because of the increased temperature tissue temperature at the affected site and edema, edema is the accumulation of fluid increased blood flow stretches blood capillary walls increasing their permeability this facilitate the influx of fluids and cells from the capillary to the tissue. So, this is the accumulation of fluid causes tissue swelling so, ok. So, edema is nothing but the accumulation of fluid and the influx of phagocytes uh, increased permeability in influx of phagocyte to the 
affected area. Increased permeability helps phagocyte to migrate into the tissue and contract with the pathogens. Also a series of events. So, so inflammatory mediator, once the site got injured, immediately it starts secreting the inflammatory mediators kind of histamines, kinins or uh, prostaglandins and uh, three major events occurs in the inflammatory uh, uh, response. One is vasodilation, edema and influx of phagocytes. Vasodilation is nothing but the uh, increased blood flow to the site and thereby redness or swelling or uh, increase in tissue temperature will happen. Edema is nothing but the accumulation of fluid uh, which causes the swelling. And the third is the influx of they are inviting the phagocytes to count, uh, counteract with the pathogen. So, influx of uh, patho, uh, phagocytes. So, they want phagocytes to come and act against the pathogen. Okay. So, influx of phagocytes increased permeability helps phagocyte to the affected area and contact with the pathogens with the series. So, uh, so this, uh, this uh, picture gives the series of uh, events happening during influx of phagocytes. First, the adherence of phagocytes to the endothelial cell wall of the blood vessel that is margination. And next is the extravasation, extravasation of diapedesis that the emigration between the endothelial cells to the tissue. First phagocytes go and attach, go and attach to the walls of the endothelial cells. Next this is the extravasation that is the between the endothelial uh, walls it migrates okay between the endothelial cells to the tissue. The third one is migration through the tissue to the site of ear site of in infection. So, first influx of phagocytes, first it go and attach to the endothelial cell wall and next extravasation occurs like between the endothelial cell it will go and finally reaches the site. These are the three events, sorry, these are the three series of events happening at the uh, influx of uh, phagocytes, influx of phagocytes. As the phagocytes accumulate at the site of action and begin to phagocytes the bacteria, bacteria and release the lytic enzyme that may damage near the cells. The accumulation of dead cell or digested material and fluid uh, forms a substance called pus. And this is the image uh, of influx of phagocytes. And this is a very uh, detailed uh, image of an inflammatory uh, response. So, uh, these are the inflammatory mediators which I said histamines, uh, uh, bradykinins, uh, uh, prostaglandins, these are the major uh, uh, cells involved, uh, mediators involved in inflammatory response, a chemical uh, histamine, kinins and bradykinins. In addition to the process of inflammation, it also ends, helps enzymes involved in blood coagulation cascade to enter the tissue. Okay. So, this results in activation of clotting which in turn helps in the wall of infection area and prevents spread of infection. Once the inflammatory response upsets, tissue regeneration process begins. Okay. So, there are two types of inflammation, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation uh, happens only at for a shorter period of time whereas, the chronic inflammation occurs for the prolonged period of time. So, lasts for a shorter duration and uh, main, main cells involved in acute uh, are uh, leukocytes or pre predominantly neutrophils again. Frustrated phagocytosis again it is the biomaterials is much bigger than the attached cell, release of products to degrade the biomaterial. So, this uh, acute inflammation results within one week. Whereas, the chronic inflammation it is less uniform than the acute inflammation, presence of macrophages, monocytes and lymphocytes are the major cells involved in uh, chronic inflammation. So, if you place a biomaterial inside our uh, body, there are series of inflammatory responses, right? Uh, acute inflammation, first is uh, biomaterial, when an implant is placed inside the uh, body, first like or uh, injury or that is different and when an implant is placed, acute inflammation. Chronic inflammation. granulation that is the formulation of granulation tissue, granulation 
and the foreign body that is the fibrous tissue and the foreign body reaction. Okay. This foreign body reaction is mainly composed of macrophages and foreign body giant cells. So, this uh, will forms in uh, uh, forms a layer outside the implant. So, thick layer outside the implant will be formed which is macrophages and foreign body giant cells. The detailed uh, uh, explanation of inflammatory response with respect to implant will be explained uh, in later sessions. So, in this session we learnt about the what is immunity and what are the cells involved in immunity and what are the organs uh, of the immune system as well as the few basic steps of uh, inflammatory response. Thank you.